Give thanks for them. To give you thanks just for being you. For being someone who loves us. Who shows us on a daily, moment-by-moment -moment basis that we are yours. And we are grateful to be called yours. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be with us so that we could show others the mark that indicates that we are your children and that they would know that we are your children by the love that we show to others and particularly the love we show to each other here today. I give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, because you are so worthy of all my thanks. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. Is God good? All the time. Is all the time God good? Messed you up, didn't you? Amen. Since it's so good to see each other before you sit down, sisters and brothers, make sure everyone here gets the God-sized welcome they deserve. Please. Christian joy. Yeah, yeah. Amen. <coughs> you know, sisters and brothers, it is possible for people to go to a church, to go through an entire worship service, and never be welcomed or spoken to at all. That better never be the case here. Amen? Amen. It's an important thing that we do when we welcome each other. I know you might think, oh, I gotta shake people's hands, oh, I gotta talk to people. That's part of the joy of being the body of Christ, welcoming each other each week, each time that we have a chance to worship God together. Amen? Amen? So we are grateful everyone is here this morning, so grateful that God has given us a chance to be together. If you are here for the very first time, or if you are new to Kelsey, we want you to know we especially thank God for your life and that God has brought you here. And if you are here for the very first time this morning, if you'll do me a quick favor, if you'll check in our weekly program, we have a section there for an info card. I already tore mine off. Uh, but if you're here for the first time, if you'll take a few moments to fill that out, won't take you very long at all. When you're done, you can fold it just like that. And a little while later, when the offering comes around, if uh, you don't, we don't want you to feel like you have to put anything else in that plate other than this piece of paper. This is your gift to us, and it's a way that we can celebrate you being here and giving thanks to God for your life. Amen? Amen. The rest of you, if you need me to pray for something and you want me to know something, write it down here and put it in the plate, and uh, we'll make sure to... Uh... Now, if you're, if, if you're a long-time member of the church, this doesn't take the plate of your offering, of your gift. You know better than that. Amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, sisters and brothers, what a joy it is uh, to share our worship with you today. We are kind of finishing 
uh, our discipleship emphasis over the last several weeks we have been talking about what it means to be committed to Christ and we've looked at several ways uh, several things excuse me that we have committed to as the body of Christ as as disciples of Jesus uh, that that help us live out that faith in God anytime someone comes up here and professes that faith in God and becomes a, and becomes a member of the church uh, we make commitments together and we talk about what each of those commitments are and so today we're going to finish with the commitment of witness and uh, it's funny we didn't do witness for a long time uh, matter of fact in our uh, pew bible pew bible pew uh, hymnals and stuff we don't have the word witness in there because that's something that we we later added and what happened was i don't know that it happened exactly like this but i think somebody was sitting in church one day and said yeah you know what we commit our lives to christ through our prayers our presence our gifts and our service and somebody said something else is missing Something else is missing, and I think God inspired somebody and said, it's our witness. Because our witness is just as important as anything else we do as the body of Christ. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And the reason why I say we're kind of finishing, we're going to finish talking about witness today, but then next Sunday, uh, Lady Sunday, we're going to do some celebrating. Because I think as we put uh, our faith into practice and as we do certain things, that God gives us the ability to be in life-changing ministry together. And that's part of what we'll celebrate uh, next Sunday for, for Lady Sunday. But anyway, I want to that, put that before you and let you know what's going on. Uh, but as we continue in our worship together, how about we do something important? Uh, we pray for and with each other. And this is the time now I want to give you to uh, just raise your hand or stand up. If, if you want to talk about how good God's been this week or if there's something in your heart that's pressing that you really want us to pray with you, this is the time to share that as well. So, as the body of Christ, what are we praying for this week? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my neighbor, uh, Sister Ian, I said to go to the hospital to, in an ambulance this morning, so she will be with us. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you. Lord, my intention is in him a lot much better. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Brother. Yes, sir. Very hard. Yes, sir. Coworker Carolyn Copeland, who lost her son Thursday night. Lord Harris. I want to thank the Lord for another year He has given me, and uh, I want to thank for all the prayers in the church. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Birthday boy, right there, huh? Yes. Yesterday, yesterday. <laughs> Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine, huh? <laughs> uh huh? Amen. Thanks be to God. Brother. Be to God. Amen. Really? Amen. Praise God. Give her mom, she knows not what she does, right? <laughs> Amen. Thanks be to God. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 
Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Brother? So remind me who we're praying for right now. <laughs> <laughs> to God. Amen. He's walking up right now to scare you. Look at that. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, prayers for Dale and his son. And we pray God for Dale's and 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 Hear us. Um, pray for my uncle Keith Oliver. He's in the hospital because of his pneumonia. Amen. Well, friends, I know you memorized everything you just heard. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the important thing is that we remember that we are charged to care for each other by praying for each other. Uh, maybe you don't remember everything somebody said, but maybe you remember they raised their hand. You know what? Call them tomorrow. Talk to them. Ask them what it is that you need to be praying for. Maybe you didn't hear anything. Talk to somebody else who may have heard anything. And, and pray together in a real way that, that joins uh, not just uh, our words and our voices, but our hearts and, and our faith together as we pray. Uh, we're going to pray right now. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Miguel to lead us in a word of prayer. Uh, to, we're going to finish with the Lord's Prayer. And what I encourage you to do, if you're here with your family or if there's a dear friend sitting next to you, why don't you uh, grab your hands, why don't you hug each other, why don't you uh, do whatever you got to do. Let's remind ourselves that God has put us in this place together and there's something meaningful and special about that. And as such, might we join in prayer together. Brother, please. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for all that you do for us. And we know and we can testify that of the great things that you've done in our lives. We give thanks for the witnesses that have shared with us how you touched their lives. How you brought people out of serious conditions that should have laid another person out, but trusted in your hands and the Father, you have worked miracles. You have helped small children be able to deal with being born premature. You've helped one of our brothers who suffered a mild stroke recover and now be treated in, in a rehabilitation hospital. You have given so many of us a chance to celebrate another year of life, another year of going through life with that special someone that you put in our lives. And we give you thanks for that. We've also heard, Heavenly Father, of many who are feeling broken, who feel that they're in a hospital all by themselves, 
or that they're grieving the loss of someone very dear to them. And they might feel alone, confused, sometimes even angry. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would send your spirits, your spirit to those individuals, that you might give them hope, you might give them a beacon of light in a time that seems to be filled with darkness. And we know that you can do this because you've done it in our lives. So we know, Heavenly Father, that it is possible to see light when you're faced with so much to be scared of. And we put our trust in you, Heavenly Father, because we know that putting our trust in you brings peace to the heart. And we pray for that peace for others. We want others to know what it's like to be able to shut our eyes and rest at night knowing that everything is going to be okay because everything is in your hands. We want others to know that. We want others to feel that. We don't want others to feel scared. To feel alone. Because we remember what that's like. So we put these individuals into your hands. We put these situations into your hands. Because we know that you can do miraculous things. And sometimes that miraculous things means that you call us to do and be a part of those situations. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, that if it be your will that we can do something in these situations that can lift up a person in need, give hope to a, some, to a person who feels hopeless, to show kindness and love to those who feel marginalized and displaced, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would call on our name, that you would ask us to serve and that we might be able to serve, not because we have the ability, Heavenly Father, but because we trust that you would give us everything that we need, all the words that we need <coughs> to do your will. We ask you to be with us today. We ask you to help us open our hearts even though we have built up barriers to help protect ourselves from being hurt ever again, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be able to open our hearts and fill it with love and compassion and a true desire to know you and to love you and to serve you. We pray a blessing over all those who have called out a name situation because those are your servants who are trying to love your children help us Heavenly Father as we try to serve you a little better by serving those who are in need and pain and who just want to be loved all these things we pray in the name of our Savior who was teaching us how to live and how to love when he taught us how to be in prayer by saying our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs>
page 
Between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warm them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they go and listen to Moses, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading today comes from letter of Timothy, first Timothy's first letter, chapter six, verses eleven through sixteen. But as for you, O man of God, flee these things, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made a, the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession to keep the commandments unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which he will display at the proper time. He who is blessed, he who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in the unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen and, or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Did all of our Kelsey kids already leave? Yes. Did they already went upstairs? Okay. There we go. Uh, well, Sisters and brothers, would you please take uh, a few moments to pray with me and for me now as we have this time together. Lord, you speak your word, and we are ready to receive, and we want to receive. So help us, Lord, to open our hearts and to hear exactly what it is your spirit would tell every single one of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we trust. And all of God's people had to say, amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. Now, sisters and brothers, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But despite what so many people have said, Twinkies do not last forever. Somewhere somebody said Twinkies never go away, but in fact what we're told they actually have a life shelf of about 45 days, which is almost kind of just as scary if you think about it, right? But what happens is somebody says something, we receive it, we believe it, and all of a sudden it becomes fact. That's just one example, the Twinkie example. But I think we also, we learned sadly, just like with Twinkies, there is no such thing as the five second rule, unfortunately. There is no dark side of the moon, and despite what grandma keeps telling me, cracking your knuckles does not give you arthritis. How about a few more? You ever swallow your gum? What were you told? Seven years to digest. That's not right either. What about this? If you, if you make a face and someone slaps you on the back, what happens? Your face sticks. Seven years. Seven years. <laughs> and despite what people say, throwing rice at weddings doesn't kill birds, and it's also not accurate that we only use 10% of our brain. But what happens is somebody <laughs> says something, and maybe it kind of makes sense to us. Maybe it even kind of relates to some experience we have. We hear it, we receive it, and without even thinking, it becomes fact. 
for us. I got one more for you. One more myth that I think many of us have heard and believed. You ready for this one? People never change. Sisters and brothers, I'm going to suggest to you this morning that there are too many Christians in the world who believe that. And that I'm convinced that those are three words that stand against the hope that we have in the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. People never change. You, you know how it is. Somebody does something or says something, you're like, oh, I knew it. You know why I knew it? Because people never change. <laughs> Leopard never changes its spots, we might say. But for the Christian heart, that's not merely a myth. Sisters and brothers, that is a lie from the enemy. If people never change, then what is the gospel? What is the gospel if people do not change? Now, maybe some people that you know have yet to change. Maybe you don't feel like you've changed. But that doesn't mean people don't change. That means some people will never change. But what we shouldn't do is act like we know which ones those people are. Some people will never change. Like, you know who, you know who I'm saying, right? No point fingers. Don't act like that. Because if the grace of God can overcome death and rearrange the cosmos, then of course the grace of God can change the life of any one person. Amen? Amen. Let's not forget that, sisters and brothers. So Jesus tells this parable. He tells this parable about essentially two men. There's one man who all we know about him is a rich man. We don't know his name because in Jesus' parables, nobody ever has names except for one parable. The one we read today. So there's the rich man with no name, and then there's the poor man whose name is Lazarus. Now, just to make sure this is not the same Lazarus that Jesus brought back from the dead that was related to the two sisters that was a close friend of Jesus. That was an experience that Jesus had. This is a story Jesus told, a parable. And in the parable, you have the rich man who has everything of life. He has riches, he has comfort, he has security, he probably has a lot of authority. And then you have the poor man, Lazarus, who sits at the gate of this rich man, wishing and waiting for the crumbs just to fall his way. And as he sits and as he waits, the dogs of the neighborhood, the wild dogs of the neighborhood, come and lick his sores because that's how desolate this man is. Well, just like Ecclesiastes reminds us, every rich man and every poor man dies. And so Jesus tells us they both die one day. Lazarus goes up to meet with Abraham. The rich man goes somewhere else. And as the rich man is there, he, he's, he's suffering, he's being tormented, all these things are happening to him. He happens to look up and he sees Lazarus standing right there with Abraham. And he calls out to Abraham, send Lazarus down here so that he can bring a little bit of comfort to me. And Abraham calls back to him. Sorry, can't do that. Look, when you were alive, you had everything you had. He had everything he didn't have. But now he has something else. And besides, even if he or anybody else wanted to, they can't go down there because of this great cat. And then the man, he says something just in the next sentence, kind of strange. He says, you know what? I still got a family. Talk to them, please. Let them know. What's going to happen to them? Abraham says, look, they've got scripture, they've got the prophets, and they still don't listen. Even if somebody were to come back and be raised from the dead, they wouldn't listen then. Now with that story, in particular with that final detail, Jesus is setting up the rest of his life and what he's going to do in his ministry coming back from the dead. And as we hear this story, I think we need to be clear that Jesus isn't just telling us, oh, this is what happens when you die. This is a parable about how you can piece together what happens in the afterlife. Please don't read that into it because we missed the point of what Jesus is actually saying. You have a rich man who spent his life apparently ignoring Lazarus. Oh, sure, he saw him there. He saw him sitting at the gate. He saw him sitting with nothing. But every day, he walked by. Probably complained about him a little bit. Probably asked, what can I do to get rid of him? 
probably wondered, why doesn't he go pick somebody else's gate? Why is he here with me? And, and even in the afterlife of the story, you see that? The rich man is still trying to get Lazarus to serve him. Send Lazarus down here to take care of me. You know why? Because some people never change. Ah, don't believe that. <laughs> he just hasn't changed yet. Hopefully. And so in this parable, we have this, this great uh, discussion about what it is to live our lives together. What it means to say that we have a life we have a life that's been given to us by God and that God expects us to do something with this life. I want you to remember who Jesus is speaking to. Of course, uh, he's been, what well, we've been talking about the last several weeks in the background of what's going on. We have Jesus, we have his disciples, and we have the, if you remember, the Pharisees. Now, when we say the Pharisees, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees with this parable. He wasn't talking to all Pharisees because not all Pharisees are bad or unfaithful. Matter of fact, most of them are probably righteous people of God, wanted to love God with all they had, with all their heart, soul, and mind. Some of some Pharisees were even crucified for their faith, just like Jesus was. So we can't say that all Pharisees are bad, but what we know about these particular Pharisees that Luke tells us, if they are they are lovers of what? Anybody Money. remember? Money. Money. These particular Pharisees are lovers of money. And what we find is very plainly stated, not just for those Pharisees who were lovers of money, but Pharisees before them and even Pharisees even today, is that a love of money leads to a neglect of people. Now we can talk about, yeah, you know, if you love money, you can't love God because that's what Jesus said. But we also see that a love of money leads to a neglect of people, and a neglect of people is a great concern to Jesus. Can we agree on that? Yes. You sure you want to agree on that? Because I want you to remember one day before this story happens, back in Luke chapter 4, Jesus, he had just come out of the, the desert. And as Luke tells us, when he went into the desert, he had the spirit. When he was in the desert, he had the spirit. When he came out of the desert, he had the spirit. And as he went into the synagogue, he had the spirit. And as he was in the synagogue, he was given the scroll of Isaiah, and he read from Isaiah 4. And do you remember what those words were that he read? Eagles play late, so I can wait. You remember those words from Luke 4? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Do you remember that now? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, what does that mean for us today? I think in part it means that Jesus did something with the life that God gave to him. Amen? Would you, would you agree with me if I told you that Jesus was full of the Spirit? So let me ask you a question or two. Have you ever felt full of the Spirit? Be careful how you answer. Because our churches today are full of people. Well, let's be real about ourselves. They're not full of people. But there are plenty of people who come to church week in and week out and say, Woo! I felt the Spirit that day. Now, if you were to tell me that, in the back of my mind, whether I ask you or not, is I'm thinking, how do I know? Now, you can say, oh, well, because I felt good. Or, or I liked the song. Or I got to sit next to somebody. Okay, that's fine. But that's not all the Spirit does. Because when Jesus was led by the Spirit, as he took those words from Isaiah, he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon him to do certain things. And so if you're going to say, if we're going to come here and Christians all over the world and say, oh, I felt the Spirit, then our lives better look like it when we leave. Because then maybe we weren't full of the Spirit at all. We were full of something else. Y'all with me? I had someone tell me once, be careful of people who say, I have a heart for some kind of ministry. You ever heard, yeah, it's kind of Christianese talk, right? The way Christians talk. I have a heart 
for a certain group of people. I have a heart for young people. Beware of people who tell you that, but are never around young people. Beware of people who say, I have a heart for those people who are lost, but they're never around lost people. Y'all with me? Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, it's easy to say something, but then our lives have to match what we say, sister and brother. And I guarantee you, if we are filled with the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is working and moving and, and challenging and doing all kinds of things, it's going to show when we walk out the door. It's going to show even on Monday morning. You know, the Spirit doesn't take Mondays off. The Spirit isn't saying, oh, I can't wait to get them there on Sunday because that's the only day of the week I can talk to them. The Spirit is working in us all the time. I, I decided I wasn't sure if I was going to tell you this or not. Pencil it in. Um, and, and I think it's the Spirit, so we're going to go with it, right? So I want you to please understand me. Everybody heard of the, this church, Church Unlimited? You ever heard of that church? Yeah. Okay. And understand, understand what I'm saying. I, I don't agree with what they do theologically. They have a statement that says that their goal is to uh, bring as many people to them, uh, to get as many people in heaven before they die. Something like that, right? Now, theologically, I don't agree with that. I have a lot of reasons. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's anything. I'm saying I disagree with that. I think there's more nuance. There's more things. But here's what I do know. People that go to Church Unlimited, if they talk about that they're feeling the Spirit, you know what they're being told to do then? Because they believe that they need to take as many people to heaven with them before they die, then you know what? They're in places where people who aren't going to heaven are. Y'all with me? That's why you go to Waterburger Field and you'll see a church in the sign. That's why you go to the mall and you see a, a big old picture of their pastor or whoever on the mall. Because what they're saying is, what they believe is, this is true for us, <coughs> True enough, and we're going to do something with it. Sisters and brothers, that is what the church is supposed to do. That is what it means to be filled with the Spirit, that we come here each week as a gift from God, we worship together, but then we realize if the Spirit's going to anoint us, if the Spirit's going to impact us, then that has to mean something for when we get out of these pews. If not, it's probably just something else that isn't from God either. Am I being too harsh? Someone said yes. <laughs> I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just trying to follow Jesus, y'all. I'm just trying to be faithful to the words that we have in the text, to, to, to the mission that we've been given by God. And I believe most of us are as well, but we have a, a desire to follow God with everything we we have, but I think sometimes we are just like that man in the story. Why do we ignore people then? Why do we ignore the, the needs of people? Why do we ignore the opportunity that God gives us day in and day out to share the everlasting love of God? Could it be that we are lovers of money? Could it be we're lovers of ourselves? Could we love our comfort? something else. So, a couple questions for you about this man. Did the man change in the story? The rich man? I hear yes and no. I love it. <laughs> That's how you know Jesus told a good parable. Everybody's like, oh, you know, yeah, you know, right? I don't know, right? He certainly doesn't repent. He certainly doesn't say, Lazarus, I'm sorry. Matter of fact, he says, Lazarus, come conserve me, right? But he does kind of change his mind. He says, well, okay, well, talk to my family. Now, he doesn't say, talk to everybody else. He says, talk to my family. So you can kind of make a case for either or, right? Did the man change his mind? Did he change what was happening? Here's another question for you. Did his brothers change? We don't know about them. He just tells Lazarus, he just tells Abraham that his brothers need to hear this. And Abraham says, well, they're not going to listen to anything else. They haven't listened so far. And I think sometimes we hear something like that and we think, oh, that's just how it is. Some people never change. 
but I want you to think of it differently. I want you to think in your mind that maybe those are the people God is sending us to. Those people who have not listened and have not heard. And I'm going to tell you this because I think I've said it before, but I'm only repeating it because it still happens, right? I don't know if you know this or not, but preachers, they're just like normal people, right? Uh, we go to ATB, right? We have favorite football teams, Fly Eagles Fly, right? We're just like normal people, right? So it never fails, uh, just about, we go to HB, right? And I'm shopping and I bump into somebody from church, right? And usually it's, it's the person who hasn't been to church in quite a while, right? And I see them and pay attention if you have noticed that I say the same thing. It's good to see you because I thought it is, it's good to see you. And what's the first thing they tell me? They don't say it's good to see me. They don't ask me how I'm doing. The first thing they say to me is, oh, brother, it's because, man, I've been so busy lately. Oh, man. Man, you know, things have been happening. I, I do need you to pray for me. I'm like, bro, I was just trying to figure out if this is keto friendly or not. Well, I wasn't asking anything for sure. Right? <laughs> Here's what I know people expect me, as preacher, as pastor, to ask them why they haven't been in church. They expect me, somebody like me, the position I have, to say, how can I pray for you? <laughs> Or that they need to pray, but here's what I know. Nobody listens to the preacher. Because if they did, there'd be a lot more people praying, there'd be a lot more people in church, there'd be a lot more people reading the Bible. Here's what I know. They won't listen to me. But they might listen more to you. Because you're just like them, right? It's my job, right? To tell people to go to church. What if who you are? if you had a desire with your life to lead people to Christ, what would change? For those people and for yourself. I'm convinced most of us don't know the joy of leading somebody to Christ because if we did, we'd probably do it alone just for that reason. Sisters and brothers, your life is a witness to the love of God. Amen. Who you are, how you speak, Speak, the things you say, the way you act, that is a witness to the world. And when somebody comes up here, we ask, will you pray for the church? Because the church needs people who will pray for it. We ask you if you will commit to Christ by being an active presence in the life of the body of Christ, because the church needs that presence. We ask you if you will be a generous giver, because the church and the world need people who live generously. We ask you if you're ready to commit to serve because people need to be served. And then we ask you if you are ready to commit to a witness. Because you could give all you want on Sunday morning, right? You could be the biggest giver here. You could write the biggest check. You could tell everybody about it. But if you go and if your witness isn't right, what does that say to the world? Your witness matters, sister. Come to mind is most times people won't listen to the preacher. People never change until they do. And so many times they do because someone like you walk with them. Nobody listens to the preacher. Until they do. paper with 22 questions to ask yourself at the end of the day. And what I've reminded you week in and week out is that if you go through all these questions, they cover all the stuff that we've been talking about, praying and giving and worshiping and, and uh, serving and being a witness. It's all there. 
And I'm convinced that as we take an honest look at our lives and our discipleship and what we've done with our faith, that we'll find out that we always come short. That may sound frustrating. Oh, I can never be everything. Of course you can. Not on this side of heaven. But we can always be something more faithful every day. And so as you read through this, I'm hoping and I'm asking, I've been asking God, that God, you convict us and you show us things that we need to see about ourselves. So I hope you, you've taken this seriously. And so what I'm going to do today, what I'm going to ask you to do with me is, is to pray. Um, to pray very intently. I need someone who will stand up and say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm asking you to be willing to hear those words of Jesus, not just as something that happened a long time ago, but as something that God wants to happen, have happen again, right here, right now, starting with you. That the Spirit of the Lord indeed would be upon us, and we would hear these vows that we've taken again about giving our lives to Christ, being committed to the cause of Christ, and we would say, Lord, I am ready. So I want us to pray, and I want to, I want to open up the altar room um, this morning. I want some of you to come that, that feel like that uh, you haven't been giving God everything uh, that you know you need to. Uh, I want the persons who feel like they've been holding back, or who felt like they weren't worthy enough to realize that God's too good to think that way. I want the person who, who has felt like they know that there's something that they've been missing in their walk with God and they're ready. I want us to pray together. And if that's you, I want you to come forward now. We're going to pray together. I want all of us to, to pray together. And we're going to ask for the, the Spirit's direction. And we're going to ask that truly as we commit and recommit our lives to Christ, that as an entire body of Christ, we can be faithful to God. Are you ready to pray? Does anybody want to pray up here? Let's pray. Indeed, come Holy Spirit, we need your power. Lord, we need to know what it means, God, to have your presence rest over us, not just in a comforting way, but in that convicting way. God, we need to know that just as much grace as you have given to us, there is so much more that you want us to give to other people. God, we come before you this day with thanksgiving because we know that even though we have been unfaithful to you, your love remains steadfast. You are always good to us. You are always faithful to us. So God, we, we ask for your forgiveness for what we have done as individuals, for what we have done as a church that has kept us from faithfully serving you. God, we are ready. We are ready as disciples of Jesus Christ to walk into the world wherever it is you lead us, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, whether it's down the street, wherever it is, Lord, that you place us, God, we are ready to be your disciples we know that there's no place where you don't meet us, and there is no person who stands outside of that need for you. So help us, Almighty God, as we recommit, recommit ourselves right now to stand with joy knowing that we have been saved and loved by you, but also stand with conviction, God, with the readiness to be your servant here in this place and all places you send us. And for all those, God, who are committing themselves again, for all those who are committing themselves for the first time, God, we all need the same thing, and that's you. Fill us with your spirit and your grace. May it be that today be a new day for all of our hearts, that today can be a day that we all can look back and say, I remember when God moved us. I remember when God touched our hearts 
and set us on his way. Lord, we are ready. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks be. The ushers. ushers prepare to come forward. I want to give thanks to everyone here. You're a blessing to me. And just as you are a blessing to me, we need to be a blessing to the rest of our friends and neighbors that we find outside of this church. One way that we are a neighbor is to provide the necessary things for them to know about the gospel, to know about what it means to, to, to know that they are forgiven and that they are redeemed by Jesus Christ. So as us just come forward, I'd ask you, if we are thankful, if we feel blessed, let us share our blessings. Father, we are truly merciful. We ask that you would bless all that we give and that you would multiply our giving so that your kingdom may be served, that we might be able to reach everyone who is marginalized, that they might feel the love and the peace that comes from knowing the example of your son, Jesus Christ. For it is in his name that we do all of our ministry. Amen.
YouTube can make over $5,000 as a way to get them uh, to Summit Camp. Uh, the other thing I want to remind you of, something we, we introduced last weekend, is that, is that is our kickball tournament and local shop, shop local market day. Uh, scheduled for Saturday, December the 7th. And if you have any questions about that, if you're looking to be a part of that, I see Chris. Krista, can you wave your hand? That's Krista. Everybody say, hi, Krista. Hi, Krista. Uh, talk to Krista if you want to be a part of that and you want to tell her how you can help. She'll tell you some of the things that we need to do as well. And I have a little note here that I didn't write. It says, Miguel needs to make announcements. <laughs> Is that you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, well, uh, Pastor already mentioned we're going to be having a Bienvenida uh, celebration next Sunday. Everyone's going to be welcome. We're going to have a ride after church. So I would invite the whole congregation to show up and show our appreciation to our pastor, the one we have been blessed with, so that we can uh, express to him our gratitude. Also, I uh, just want to mention quickly that we are also going to have our choir practice today at 3 o'clock and uh, again uh, tomorrow at 6.30. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Sister Brother, would you please stand as we give our praise to God? Spoken and proclaimed, I think we can say that we have 
worship together. Amen. We have been blessed by God's presence Amen. with us. And since we have been blessed, now in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, go in peace and be a blessing to the world. Amen. 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 Amen.